What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Own the Hunt and Own the Hunt podcast. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight, you guys. We have a special guest tonight. We are going to be talking all things custom rifle builds, if that's something you're interested in. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss this. Uh, before I bring him on, just want to give a special thanks to Logan at Fall River Shooters, Fat Boy Tripods, and Huntworth Gear. Guys, get yourself some Huntworth Gear. Get yourself a Fat Boy Tripod. Be shooting stable and hit up Logan for all your thermal needs. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to bring on our guest, and uh, his name is Mark Downing. Mark, how's it going, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? Awesome, brother. Thank you for joining us. It means a Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. The so, bar. Mark, uh, owner of Night Stalker Precision out of Virginia. Yes, sir. And Custom Rifle Builds is the name of the game for you. Yeah. Let's, that's, uh, um, let's hear how you got your start. Uh, Well, I've been shooting for, I mean, ever since I could pull the trigger. I've always been into especially like longer range stuff, you know, not mile shooting, but I always five, six, seven, eight hundred yards. Um, and started predator hunting with a friend of mine, uh, Jordan Brown. He's my teammate, partner, whatever you want to call him, uh, partner in crime. And uh, we were out, you know, he got me into fox hunting is what we mainly started because we didn't really even know coyotes were around here. And uh, <laughs> funny story, we went out, we had red lights and I had a uh, Oh, what was it? A uh, Ruger SR762, uh, 20 inch AR10. Uh, kind of like Guffy was talking. I mean, Blake was talking. I had a flashlight tape to it because I didn't have any mount or nothing for it. And uh, so we went out, and he's like, All right, you know, he said, What you do is when you shine it on, and when you see the eyes, you shoot for the eyes. I said, All right, cool. And uh, I mean, big, heavy. I had a Burris XTR3 tactical, like, you know, long range precision scope on it. And we called in a Fox uh, probably the second or third time we went out and uh, he, that Fox stopped and I shined that light on and I pulled the trigger and I was like, all right, we got him. And we went out there. He's like, damn, well, you listen well. Cause I hit him right in between the eyes. <laughs> well, 308. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So that oh. was, uh, so that's what got me started on hunting. And like I said, I've always messed with, you know, messed with the rifles and all that. And, so we were getting ready to go out for a tournament and we always go out and we, you know, sight our guns in, check everything, make sure everything's good. And uh, I was shooting a uh, LaRue Predator 556 at the time. Man, I mean, it's, I can't say anything more highly about a rifle. It still hangs on my wall. Probably ought to put it in the case as many coyotes and foxes as killed. But, yeah, the, uh, you know, and I was shooting half three quarter MOA out of it at 100 yards and he had a, it was just like a, a PSA build. It was a 6.8 SPC. And I mean, that thing was grouping like three, three and a half inches. And I said, man, we, I said, we got to do better than that. I said, you know, we got to, we got to get you something. I said, uh, and I never built a rifle in. And I was like, let me build you one. Let me, let me see what I can do. I know I can make one more accurate than that. So I did research after research after research and figured it out and put one together and it printed three quarter MOA right out of the box. And some learning experience we end up you know he ended up finally getting a suppressor thanks to my ears and I, i'd already had a, a few of them but um that's a game changer right there of course got into some overpressure issues and stuff like that ended up breaking the case head off at one point or another so i had to learn you know all the, the gas blocks and you know changing the buffers around and stuff like that i mean that's been you know six eight ten years ago and <clears throat> it was a good learning experience um and then we ended up wanting to step up guys because at the time we had a caliber restriction in our county. So 22 caliber, you know, of course I know the six, eight wasn't, but it was still an AR 15 platform. So it appeared that way. And when they changed that, uh, we decided to step up to, uh, we both shoot a 24 inch six, five Creedmoor now. And that's, that's where the bills really started <clears throat> getting, getting expensive, I guess, or, high end or so reached out to smoke composites for their light hand guards and uh scott over at uh spade composites uh running 24 inches of their barrels yeah i actually uh, have a i have a specialized dynamics rifle um, oh yeah he makes he me yep yeah. Yeah, sad, like, to see like him, sad to see him turn over that business 
Yeah, I, I talk to him. I, uh, when we get on the phone, we tend to have an hour or two long conversation. We'll be talking yeah. about ballistics and all that stuff like that. It's it's good to talk. I like Scott. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah, easy to talk and, to. Um, so after that, like, you know, hunting some tournaments and some other friends, they're like, hey, why don't you build me a rifle? And then why don't you build me a rifle? And, you know, and that's, and it went on to that. And then uh, I, you know, built several of them, I guess, under the table per se. And um, I got talking to my wife. She wasn't my wife at the time. She, we were just friends. But uh, she's laughing at me. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to make a business out of it. And so that's, you know, that's what we did. And uh, it's been an uphill journey ever since. It really has. It's uh, It's been years and years in the making. I mean, I had... I probably had five or six rifles out in the field for probably two years testing before I ever decided to bring it public um, to making sure that everything, because I'm, I'm big on uh, just, you know, stand behind whatever I built. Right. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Like it's, uh, if you buy something from me, you've got service for life. Like I'm not afraid to say for life, you know? And so I didn't want to bring something out that wasn't tested. So, I mean, we beat the hell out of them coyote hunting, you know, and, uh, I mean, it's been great. And I, uh, a lot of vendors, a lot of dealers, um, we're a stocking dealer for every company I deal. So that way, if somebody wants a rifle, you get that rifle within a week. Yeah. Guffy yeah. mentioned, messen, men, mentioned that the other night and, uh, I was really impressed because I mean, almost anyone I've ever talked to about a custom build, they're like, oh, yeah, we got to order in all your parts. And that really tells me, for one, that you don't kind of have a standardized thing going on there. So then, like, how do you get around compatibility issues or any sort of weird fitment issues that you may come up with or anything like that? I get I get that most all of it's pretty standardized. But, you know, if you haven't tested it as a build entirely, then... How do you know what it's going to do? How do you know what it's capable of? So when Guffy mentioned that the other night, I was I was actually pretty impressed. It's it's cool that you are getting product in, stocking it. Someone could call you up and be like, "Hey, I want this build," and you know, I'm sure you can tailor it a little bit here and there. But then I'm sure that there's certain things you're not going to deviate from for the most part, right? Oh no, for sure. So like, um, the internal is going to always be JP Enterprise. Great. So it's going to be at FMOFs or LMOFs bolt i mean a uh, carrier and enhanced bolt or hp bolt um unless i mean you get so like the ar-15 is pretty much standard like there's an actual mill spec for ar-15 so you right. can throw any kind of parts at ar-15 and make one work you know um quality parts certainly makes you know a big difference but you know when it comes to like the ar-10 there's there's nothing really standard i mean it's r10 it's r25 yeah. you know lr308 um, actual AR-10 is, you know, is different. Um, but the, uh, so I, I reached out to a company, I guess it was early last year and they started, uh, building receiver sets for me. And yeah. Which I got to tell you, man, those are some of the sharpest looking receiver sets I've ever seen. No, uh, there you go. Yeah. Show the people that is sharp. So this is the uh, NSP-10 receiver set here. Um, all billet? All billet, yep. Yeah. The, um, and they've, uh, I mean, they've been great. I mean, they, you know, we had shared a bunch of pictures back and forth in the raw metal and stuff like that, and they were asking about Cerakote options, and I don't know. I was like, let's go sniper gray. And uh, and when they come in and I unwrapped them the first time, I, I'm not, you know, I realize that, they're my receivers, but man, they're sexy. Oh, <laughs> I can't yeah. even, they are. Yeah, those are real sharp. Um, they kind of remind me a little bit of the uh, Seekins. Uh, the yeah, Seekins they kind of are. Yep. Similar, I, and I love those. I just I love the sharp lines and and all the detail that gets milled into them. That they look really good. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Like, it's got Andy say, Bolt. Oh Andy yeah, Bolt release, and you know all the. But they, yeah, they look high they end look stuff. Dark. Yeah. I mean, it's. So that's know. your sniper gray. Yep. Yep. 
Yep, nice. So that must that accents very well with like your carbon fiber builds. It does because there's a lot of gray and stuff in the carbon, and yeah. uh, and it goes good too. Like if you throw some black components on there, you know, like a, yeah. uh, of course, like I guess you can't, you know, I mean the whole gray grip. I mean, if you use the whole grip, not the carbon grip, I mean it pretty much matches perfect. And yeah. uh, but so as far as that goes, like. I won't build. So I've got a couple. So when I first started, I was using Great Ghost Precision receivers. Yep. Um, I, you know, the great receivers and stuff like that. Um, you know, but when I had a chance to make, you know, my own, that's obviously what I wanted to go with. But the, uh, you know, I can't say anything bad about the Great Ghost ones. I mean, they're, uh, I mean, they were nice. But as far as the AR10 build, like I won't build anything off of. It's got to be my receiver set. Yep. Because I know everything fits and functions. Um, you know, I have people call me and want to know if I build just an upper. And I'm like, well, I can't really do that. Because I can't build it off of my upper because of the cuts on it. That's actually more of an AR-10 style angle cut. I'll tell you what, hold on. Let me show you the difference real quick. So I still have a few of the Grey Ghost receivers left. So if you look on the Grey Ghost receiver, you see the rounded edge here where they yep. separate. So that's actual, you know, SR-25 pattern. So this, see how it's angled? So that's basically, it's it's angled based off AR-10 pattern, but uses all SR-25 parts. Okay, that's cool. Um, and so, you know, I couldn't just build an upper because if if they didn't have it cut like that, then it wouldn't fit. Right. Um, so I don't, I don't do any AR-10 uppers. Now... I have options for AR-15 because I have the NSP-15 receivers. But I also have um, CMMG lowers and also have, well, uh, yeah, CMMG lowers and I have uh, LaRue lowers as well. Okay. Um, so I can build and I've got, you know, so I can build AR-15 and build one, you know, cost effective, but still function amazing. Like, Yep. It's still going to have JP Bolton carrier. It's going to have solid capture spring. Um, and some of the AR 15s you can get away with by not using an adjustable gas block, but just by changing the buffers and stuff. And it's all depending on the weight of the, the bolt carrier. But every AR 10 ships with an adjustable gas block. That's great. Um, it's just, you know, it's, I think I've only sold three that people were going to shoot unsuppressed and it always, it's always a surprise when I get it. Cause I always ask the customer, you know, are you shooting suppressed or unsuppressed and it's always suppressed. And then I get the one, Oh, I don't have a suppressor. I'm like, Oh, all right, let me go back. So I got a few standard weight, you know, capture springs and uh, stuff like that. So I got to, yeah, those are the ones that usually take a little bit more work involved. Right. You know, uh, it's funny. I, I bought my, I bought a custom build off of Scott, like I mentioned and, uh, I got it, and and per my recommendation, I I, told, I said, look, I don't have a suppressor yet. Um, I don't know when I will. So you know, build it as though I'm unsuppressed. And he shipped it out with an adjustable gas block. Had a few issues, um, gassing issues, and it ended up being the the actual gas block itself um, was just not working properly. And uh, sent it back. He sent me a brand new one. Was it no an problem. SLR? No, no, it wasn't an SLR. So it was just a, I don't know what brand it was. Um, it didn't have like a stamp on it or any branding. Right. So it was just a steel gas block, steel adjustable gas block, nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, he sent me a new one and it fixed the issue. So I don't know what the issue really was. I feel like what I told him, because I did a lot of my own troubleshooting, because obviously I wanted like hell not to send my rifle out to him if I didn't have to. And, uh, so I think what it was, was a loose, uh, adjustment screw. So right. the, I think gas was seeping by the adjustment screw, uh, that it was, that screw was slightly out of spec and gas could right. sit by it. So I think that was what my issue was. Now he didn't experience those issues when he test fired it. So I don't know if that happened after I tried to make adjustments to it or what, but, um, yeah, so gas blocks for sure, uh, can, can definitely be uh, you know a weird 
thing to troubleshoot if you have to, but it sounds like you put on high end. Are you running SLRs? No. So I've actually, it's the only gas block I've ever had a problem with. That's why. Oh, I, interesting. Yeah. So now I they use, are I supposed use JP. to be. Okay. I use, I use JP and um, I think I've got one. I've got one here just on a rifle chassis. I like the JP. They, they got two different styles. If I get this damn thing in the camera. Yep. But they've got an adjustment screw that comes in from the side right there versus, you know, a lot of them come in from the right. end. So you can get in so, by your hand guard. Yeah. So it works out perfect. You can just take a small Allen wrench, just make a few clicks, and they've got a lot of adjustments. Now they've got uh, some new ones that came out too that adjust from the end. Um, and so depending on the hand guard, uh, if I use the smoke hand guard, then I mean, that makes it perfect. Um, right. It's got the, the slots all the way around it. And uh, adjustment is so easy. So do those, you said clicks, those have positive clicks for yeah. adjustment? Okay. Yeah, but it's got, so just say like an SLR has, I don't know, 10 or 12. This has like, I, I don't remember exactly, like 25. Oh, it's real wow. You really fine adjustment. In. Yeah. That's um, impressive. And so I'm a suppressor dealer too, so that works out good. So um, when somebody orders a rifle, like, I mean, their rifle is going to be shipped out and it's going to have between 10 and 20 rounds through it before it goes to the customer. That's awesome. Definitely going to fun function and it's going to be set for a suppressor when it leaves. So it's, <laughs> you know, you get, you literally get it out of the box and go shooting. Uh, yep. I know Brandon over at Texas Plinking, he got one and tested out and did his uh, one MOA at 1,000 yard challenge with it. And uh, he couldn't say enough about it. It is the first AR he'd ever had. It, he pulled it out of the box and shot it suppressed, and it functioned flawlessly. Um, and that's, I mean, I spent just spent a lot of time. Scott tells me I'm crazy over specialized dynamics. He tells me I'm crazy for. Uh, shooting that many bullets he said i'd run myself out of ammo i was like well i'd rather do that because i feel like like that ruger sr 762 like i had a lot of issues with that rifle like and that was a two thousand dollar rifle back in the day i mean it's yep. an older rifle they don't even make it anymore and i i said i had to send it back to ruger i think three times for functionality and i feel like that they just leave untested yeah yeah they, they I mean, fire a few rounds through it they don't test the different functions the different uh, you know, I honestly think they may fire one round. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I get it. I mean, ammo is expensive, but yeah, I don't want somebody to have to send a rifle back or, right. you know. Yeah. I mean, you talk about like at that point you need to test and make sure you're getting proper feed and cycling, not just being able to fire around, you know? It's, oh yeah. Yeah. So I mean, many they, uh, you have to test. Oh, you wouldn't believe, I mean, just little parts. Like I've had, uh, bolt catches you know not being spec and so you get to the last round and they won't hold yep um and i'm you know you, you just sit back and troubleshoot and like what you know what is going on and you look at it and you know the the end of the bolt catches is, is rounded off just enough to where it doesn't positively engage the bolt yeah or i mean just just little simple stuff like that and it's uh that's why i want to make sure i put plenty of rounds through them yeah, that's huge, man. I mean, you obviously you you care, right? You know, you have a level of, of care when you send a rifle that costs that kind of money to a customer. Oh, for sure. I yeah. I take a lot of pride in, in anything I've ever built, whether it's, you know, messing with a truck or a car or a rifle or you know, I'm I'm not gonna say I'm a perfectionist because nobody's perfect, but I just, you know, when it comes to like Somebody I know is a lot of money. I mean, honestly, like the first full carbon rifle I built was more money than I ever spent on any of my own rifles. Yeah. Like, so I know it's expensive. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. sure. Um, you know, but it's the uh, the components is are the expensive part. You know, and I mean, you've got you know a thousand dollars in just the 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 bolt and the carrier and the gas block and the buffer. I mean, that's, you know, you got yep. over a thousand dollars just for those parts alone. Yep. And, uh, so it's hard to build, you know, a cheap, especially AR 10. Like I just, I just can't get, you know, the, the carbon components are expensive. Um, and like the, what I use for AR 10s, like my standard length is, uh, 20 inches on the handguard. Yep. Like a lot of people use 
16, stuff like that. I don't want to see all that barrel hanging out. Right. Um, I don't want to see the gas block. None of that. Like I want it. And plus, if you've got to stand and shoot, you know, you know, being able to hold the rifle like that or be able to stretch your arm out. I mean, you've got so much more uh, precision out of being able to, to have a full length grab on that. And then the, the AR-15s are uh, 18 inch. So, I mean, they're all custom ordered from Smoke, which, I mean, they're a, they're an amazing company. Like they've been, I mean, they have uh, been nothing but great. Like the, um, you know, the handguard's round. So if you're using a smoke handguard, if you go to mount a Picatinny rail or just say a standard ARCA rail to the bottom of it, since the handguard's round, like you, the only really point of contact is right there where the bolt screws in. So people are like, oh, they've got a lot of flex in their handguards. Well, I mean, they really actually don't. It's just the way that the mount you're using is. So they actually... So my wife has actually got the beta version of their Arca rail that they sent over for us to test. And so it's actually rounded. Contours. So it goes up and contours to the, uh, to the handguard and it takes away all flex out of it by doing that. And That's uh, cool. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, does the carbon, it. does the carbon handguard have some flex inherently just because of what it is, as opposed to say yeah. like a aluminum handguard? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, it has the ability to flex where if your aluminum handguard is flexing, we got issues. Right. right. <laughs> but I mean, so, yeah, there is the ability for it to flex some. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not a polymer, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bend. Right. But when you got, um, I'll, let me grab a rail real sure. quick. That's an 18 inch for a AR-15. And since, I mean, there's no actual flat surfaces their rail was curved to fit that That's and I mean, cool. it fits fits perfect yeah i mean it, it doesn't really give it the ability to flex now i mean if you wrench down on it you can get some movement but it's not it's not really detrimental yeah but i've You're never had, i've never had one break yeah that's what i was I've, gonna ask i've had one mishap with a stock that a guy ended up dropping it and it broke the butt pad off and smoke overnighted the customer a new stop like oh, free of charge. I mean, they, they are great. And the, only thing, <clears throat> the only thing that they asked was that they sent back the old one to check for quality control issues to make sure there's nothing wrong with the mold or something like that. And it's yeah, just because they care. That's cool. Yeah. That's no, they're, cool. They are great to deal with. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, when you find companies like that, for components you, you know you have a good relationship with and you've had proven um quality you know just over time you you've seen the quality just be spot on that's what you're gonna run i mean yeah yeah that's the only issue that have out of anything that i've ever had um from them that's the only issue i mean we've uh you know I mean, people carry the, the guns on the tripods out with the smoke hand guards and stuff like that. And I know that if if one breaks, they're going to stand behind it. Like it's that's crazy. Yeah, because that's how we're all carrying them now. We, we clamp them into those freaking tripod heads. And I still can't get down with it. I, I can't do it. Come I just, on, dude. I can't do it. I, uh, I, I, I carry mine in on a sling. I, I'm quick at setting it up, but I just. No shit. It's well, just, uh, well, tell us why. Tell us why. Because I, I do. I carry mine on my tripod. I think most people do. So just paranoid. I'm not paranoid, but I'm going to say that and everybody here does it. I know, I know that at least 90 percent of you carry your gun in, like especially after the first stand, the rifle is going to be chambered. And, you know, I just don't want to miss up where if it something does fall or I trip and fall and it's on the tripod somehow ended up with a fire, you know, situation around going off. Um, and it's just, you know, boys got a four or $5,000 rifle sitting on there. I don't yeah. want to drop that either. Like that's plus, you know, a, plus a six or six or $7,000 thermal optic. Oh yeah, for sure. That and yep. your suppressor, you know, all that. So, I mean, I've yeah. seen, uh, I've seen a guy carrying it out there and he tripped and fell and ended up barrel stuffed it in a mud hole. Yep. So we had to take the suppressor off. We had to get it all cleaned out and like stuff like that. And then, you know, it's just, uh, 
I'll take my sling. Like it doesn't take me long. Of course, you know, where we're hunting at, I mean, it's, it's pretty wide open. It's, uh, and we're going in, you know, we've got a night ride mounted on our suburban. So we're, you can see everything when we're going in. And so the chances of running up on a coyote. Now, if we're in the field or something and, you know, coyotes are 300 yards away and we're going to walk. Now, I'm going to, I'll pick it up and walk that way. But when it comes sure. to carrying it to and, to and from the field, like, I'll take it off. It's just. Yeah, yeah I think uh, same here, right? Like the odds of us, you know, walking in on one, that just yeah. doesn't happen here at all. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I didn't think about the negligent discharge kind of thing, which it wouldn't be really negligent if it, you know, if you tripped and fell, it should right. happen. But yeah, I mean, I suppose it's just something to consider, right? If you, if you, if, if that gun drops out of the tripod head, you know, you're carrying it over your shoulder, mm -hmm. it falls straight back and it's auto automatically going to have a slight angle pointing towards the person that was carrying it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think of that, but I mean, you know, some of these bolt action rifles, I mean, you know, the triggers are set to less than a pound, you know, like these trigger tech diamonds. I mean, you know, they can be as low as like oh, what, a, a quarter or something like that on the AR. And I mean, yeah. so you've got something that drops from six feet straight down. You're going to have some inertia on that trigger That's regardless, true. you know, so it's, yeah, I mean, your gun, I mean, all right, my gun's going to be on safety. safety. On, right. You're, right, you're going to be on safety, but it's just one of those, it could happen thing. And I'm yeah. not trying to kiss around to the back of the head. Yeah. No, I, I, I respect it. I, I wasn't trying to, to throw shade. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. People, yep. people give me hell and that's fine. It's just, it's just, you know, everybody's different. I just, uh, I like to hear, I like to hear the different opinions too, though, because like, you know, we, we all just are creatures of habit. So it's like what one guy does, the next guy's probably going to do the same thing. And there may or may not be a, a different way to do something. So I like to hear, uh, the way other people do things as well. Anyway, I mean, I don't love throwing that thing on my shoulder and walking right. in. I mean, it, it definitely, I feel it at the end of the night, I, like on my neck and shoulder, I've carried that, I've, I've carried that damn tripod and rifle probably two to three miles worth of walking, um, at, at the end of a full night of hunting. So it's like, you feel that. So a sling, I mean, I like, I like slinging a rifle. Um, and, but I've always been like, well, if I got to carry the damn tripod anyway, plus maybe like my call in one hand or something, I've always just been like, then I can throw the tripod and rifle on. That's only one thing I got to to deal with. But that's been my thought. And uh, but you just made me think a little bit on that. So let's uh, let's talk bolt guns a little bit. Uh, we talked ARs, and um, I, it seems like that's your preference. It is beauty, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. This is probably the – I love this chassis. It's from MDT. Oh, nice. Is that a laminated wood? It, yeah, it's white birch. It's real wood. Wow, that's beautiful. Yep. And uh, I don't know. It took me months. I think they ceased production on it, but the uh, it come in, and I was like, yeah, I'm not letting the customer get that. I've uh, That's going to be mine. Yeah, that's beautiful. I have not seen a, a wood one from them. I didn't know they do they still make wood ones, just not that one. No, I'm not sure. Uh, the last I saw, they they stop stop making that version, but it still got the aluminum V bedding and stuff on the inside. Yeah, and got. I saw it had a an M lock insert on the bottom of the. Yeah, it's got M lock, and it's also got. Uh, you can change grips. It comes with a vertical or standard, oh, so that's it's cool. like aluminized on the inside, the skeleton. And then it's got a spot for a monopod or another rail in the back, and it's all adjustable. Yeah, something, like something tells me that's expensive to manufacture. Uh, so that's – it's not their highest end one, but it's its on the upper tier for yep. sure. Yeah, that's cool. So you're going to build a bolt gun. If you're going to build a bolt gun for somebody, uh, like purpose-built for predator hunting, and they weren't quite sure what they wanted, um, do you – kind of start with the budget or what's your so it's hard it's hard to really budget bolt guns because you know the aftermarket actions none of them are really what i would say value priced yeah except like that aero solus seems to be about the cheapest or like well, maybe even a howa that's what that is that's an aero solus right there and they're still nine hundred dollars wow yeah you know, 
No, I mean, and I've used Bighorn Origins. Um, they're good actions. I uh, been reached out to by uh, Kelbley's. Um, they're sending out an action to me. I'm going to test that out to see see how I like that. It looks like it's going to be some good stuff going on there. But so the budget when it comes to the bolt guns is basically how cheap your chassis is going to be. So. I mean, if you go with a stainless barrel, that's one thing. But if you go with a proof barrel, I mean, proof barrels are 900 plus. Those carbon um, fiber proof research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The proof research, yeah. Um, so that, you know, it's it's just hard to get but so cheap. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got, because I'm a stocking dealer for Trigger Tech, so I've got all their Remington 700 triggers. I just... After I use my first trigger tech, I just don't really like to use anything else. <laughs> I've heard awesome things. I've never pulled the trigger on a on a trigger tech. I've used I've I tried their demos at stores. Like they put them in like a plastic uh, pistol uh -huh. kind of thing. It's hard to get the feel for it until you're like you got eyes on a target and you're yeah. gripping on that trigger. Um, it felt great um, at the store, but I I haven't pulled the trigger behind one. Oh, they are. Target. Yeah, once you use one, you probably won't go to anything else. No shit. In my personal guns, I've got um, Geisley SSAEs and a lot of my AR-10s before I started building them. I mean, they're they're a great trigger. Um, the Larue MBT for like ARs is probably the best bang for your buck. Uh, that's uh, I mean they make good products anyway, but that is that trigger is hard to beat for like a hundred and hundred fifteen dollars. Wow, I didn't know they at, had a trigger. At, at one point, they had them on sale for like eighty nine bucks. Wow. And they are they are hard to beat for sure. But it just you know, are they, they drop in or are they individual pieces? So the LaRue's are individual pieces. Okay. Um, but I mean it I mean man, they are smooth for sure. Yeah. Um, but see, Trigger Tech just came out with their duty trigger, and it's a fixed, don't quote me, but it's a three and a half or a four pound fixed trigger. And I mean it's nice, and they're like $125. That's not bad. So, and I mean, it's it's got a real clean break, clean reset. Um, I mean, it's not the diamond, but I mean, it's you know, the diamond's three hundred fifteen dollars for a ten trigger. That's a lot. But I mean, you can also adjust it down to like a pound and a half. And I mean, the 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 reset on it is insane. I mean, it's just it, everything is is fine. And I also use their their safeties. Uh, they came out with a safety. And it's got a roller ball on the detent, so you can actually, you don't have to pull the grip off of an AR to pull the trigger out if you use a trigger tech safety. That's cool. So you can literally pick the pins out of the trigger, pop the safety out, the detent stays in place, pull the trigger out, fix it, swap it, do whatever you want, throw it back in there, and the safety goes right back in place with the roller ball. And That's then, cool. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It's uh, so that that every every build has one of them too. Um, the trigger tech safety. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, that's that tells me a lot about the build quality for sure. I mean, that yeah, that's... there's there's nothing like so I, I I think it was a year before last. I became a master dealer for JP. I mean, I've got thirty bolts and carriers here and the same thing for their um silent capture springs and their gas blocks and I mean I've got a whole box of trick tech uh safeties and I've got I don't know thirty triggers and you know so it's uh and I just started working with a company Breek Arms and yeah uh, I've heard of Breek actually I had one of their Warhammer uh ambidextrous uh charging, charging handles. handles. Well they just yeah. came out with their new uh I think it, it's a sledgehammer charging handle and it's got uh, directional ports in it that disperse the gas away from your face. That's cool. Um, Cause I've used some silencer code charging handles that are supposed to mitigate the gas. Cause I mean, yep. suppressed guns get gassy. Yeah. And so they have basically like an O-ring at the base of it. And the problem with that is if you don't have oil on that O-ring every time you use it, like you go to pull the charging handle back, the O-ring pops out. Oh, but then no. you just got an open slot right to your face. Yep. And um, I use a lot of CMMG. I'm a CMMG dealer. I use a lot of their charging handles. They make a lot of people use the Radian charging handle, 
channels. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of them. Like the charging handle is really nice. They built really well, but they're sharp as shit. And there's nothing like going to bed to rack your rifle when you're coming back and you didn't cut the skin off your fingers, you know, in the <laughs> yeah. middle of the night. And I mean, it, you know, that sounds like something, but it's just so the the brick one has the same serrations on it, but they're all rounded and smoothed off. Yeah. And that, you know, and the same thing. That with makes the a yeah. And it's just, you know, you don't want something, you know, sharp on there. Everybody knows, especially anybody who's a mechanic or anything, busting your knuckles is just... <sighs> You know, it's just the worst damn thing ever. They never heal. And it's just um, my favorite charging handle of all time is the Geisley Super Charging Handle. Uh, you can't, I don't think anyone can convince me that there's a better charging handle. I'll I'm pretty sure I've got one in here. I know I've got at least one here. It is my absolute favorite charging handle. I, I will pay the hundred dollars for them time after time after time just because I've used a lot of different charging handles and. I've never been able to quite tell like the difference. I mean, yeah, sure. I can tell that one might be a little bit better than the other over say like mill spec. But the minute I charged my rifle with that Geisley, I was like, Whoa, this is the first time I've ever charged a rifle and been like, that feels good. That, that is different. That is absolutely different. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's the materials they're using if they just somehow can make them a little more stout or what, but man, best, best feeling charging handle I've ever used. So I've got a lot of, uh, BCM gunfighters like they're yep. plus two extended ones. They've always, they've always done me well. Yep. And just, um, uh, BCM's great stuff. I really do like the same MG ones though. They're, they're, they are really nice charging handle too. That's what I've started to use a lot of. I just, I've cut myself one too many times on a radium for me to, just, <laughs> yep. you know. Yeah, once you have a bad taste in your mouth, it's hard to. Yeah. Back. What do you think? Uh, is the is the safety from uh, Trigger Tech is that Ambi or is it a single yeah, side? So you can so you can set it up Ambi. You can set it up uh, forty five or ninety. Nice. Um, because yep. I like the I like the radian safeties. The radian um, can't remember what they call it, just the radian safety i think but or the yeah. raptor safety but they're they can be set up for short throw and and ambi and i really like them i like the way they go on and off too with that little push pin it's like you you push it and slide it on and it it uh it's like a quick connect type of thing right. yeah these uh, um these have a torque screw that go in the middle and then so if you set it up ambi you put the uh the other safety part on you know, on the uh, the right side of the receiver, or if it's not, it has a blank that goes on there, so it's smooth. Okay. Um, but with that roller uh, on the D10, it's it's got a positive, very positive click as you can hear when, but it's also really smooth. Smooth, yeah. You don't yeah. get that gritty until you're like when you wear a, when you have to wear a D10 in until it's worn in. Sometimes those safeties are stiff as shit. <laughs> Well, that's a funny story because once I get a rifle built, I'll sit down on my sofa and watch TV and I'm flicking the safety on and off, on and off, on and off. Because I don't want somebody to call me and be like, damn, the safety feels like shit. <laughs> so I, I actually do that. I break the yep. safety in on the right. No hand. way, man. I that's just the, the going the extra mile. And well, um, the thing is, you know, all the receivers are Cerakoted. So, I mean, and they're Cerakoted bare. So that gets coating on places that, you know, normally wouldn't have any. So like yep. inside the safety, I have to, you know, the safety channel, I have to kind of run a, a deburr bit in there just to get some of that Hang out. out so little. it makes it smooth. And it's the same thing with the, uh, with the mag release, uh, you know, that channel, it's a real small channel. Right. You know, so I've got to go in and I've got to scrape out and smooth down some of that, uh, that Cerakote to get everything to, to function smoothly to make sure. And, I also run a uh, a die over the barrel threads to make sure they're completely smooth, uh, no obstructions, and are perfectly clean before I put a barrel nut on. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you do any lapping like for your barrels? Yeah, I do hand lapping on them. Yep. Yep. I just just so I mean I a lot of them are a lot of ARs, and I never did it, but I've heard that it can make a difference. All my receivers are uh fire formed or fire heat heat fit so 
whether you did it or not, I'll be honest, it really wouldn't make any difference. Yeah, I wondered, yeah. The barrel, the, the extension fits in there so tight. Um, you know, I've got to heat him up just to fit the barrel in there. Wow, so, no shit. Yeah. I've, I've never had to do that on a on just like a mil spec build I've done where I've bought. You no, know, you, you didn't have to do that and on these great ghosts. You don't have to do that either, but on these, you, you definitely do. That's um, really cool. You, yeah. you know, the tighter the tolerance you can get on that barrel where it mates up to the receiver, I, I'd say probably the better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there is no, you can't, I mean, if you put it on there, you can't get it off unless you heat it and, <laughs> and throw a dowel in there, a wooden dowel to drive it out. Like it's yep. not coming off. So I got a question about carbon fiber barrels. Um, right. and this is, this is for me to know because it's something I've been curious about and I think that there's maybe some misinformation out there. Do you think that a carbon fiber barrel is susceptible to burnout faster than say, you know, your typical steel barrel? Um, if you were shooting full auto, probably. Okay. But, uh, any other way and only reason i say that is because i mean basically a carbon fiber barrel was still a steel barrel it's milled down and then of course I mean, you get some companies now that are producing uh factory rifles that have carbon barrels that aren't actually carbon they're just an overlay over top of the oh uh, i didn't know that steel. yeah it's you know you get a lot of these especially you get these you know 800 dollars bolt action rifles that have a carbon barrel the barrel is not a carbon barrel I mean, no barrel is fully carbon, but so like, you know, your proofs and your spades and stuff like that, like the barrel is milled down and then it has a, I, I, I don't know the, the measurement of it, but it's, you know, it, the carbon weave is wrapped around and that brings it back up to full thickness. So that's how you get rid of your weight. So you've still got a full, full barrel. It's just, you know, milled down. Right, right. And then wrapped. And then. So, so they'll heat up pretty fast, but they also cool faster. Okay. Because carbon dissipates heat faster than steel does. That's cool. I didn't know that. Um, so, so yeah, so they'll heat up faster because you've got the steel that's going to heat up the carbon and you don't have that much steel left in the barrel. So that part heats up faster. Um, so if you do a lot of uh, rapid shooting, with a, and I'm not talking about two or three rounds, you know, I'm talking about you go out to a range day and dump it's a 30 accurate. round bag or something like that. Yeah. You know, you, you may get some, some stringers on your accuracy if you do accuracy sure. just after that, but that's not what they're designed for. So is the so carbon burning out part? No, like it's not going to be any difference. The chamber's the same as any other barrel. Um, None of that is the same. So, the like, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna wear out the uh, the rifling in a carbon barrel faster than, like I say, unless you're shooting Abusing full auto it. or something. Yeah, right. But you shouldn't have that anyway. Right. What's your if you were gonna build somebody a a predator hunting specific build uh, on a bolt on a bolt platform? What's your preferred action? If if they said, Mark, just Use whatever action you, you you'd like to use in it. Honestly, yeah. right now the uh, the Aero Solus. Really? It, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll tell you why. They got a lot of things going for them. Uh, they got a three lug interchangeable bolt. Uh, they've got dual ejectors. They have a uh, integral recoil lug, so it's not pinned on. It's not separate. Uh, one of the biggest things I like is they have an integral rail built in. Where, like, say, when I use an origin action, it's got four torque screws that screw the rail onto. Oh, yep. You know, and, you know, proper Loctite and stuff like that. It should never come off and proper torque, but it's something that can come loose. Um, and they have a 60-degree bolt throw versus most people use a 90. Yeah, that makes a big difference, actually. Yeah, and it's also cock on lift. Guffy, don't uh, don't say anything about my words. That's their terminology. But so when when you lift the bolt, it actually recocks it. So you don't have to cycle the bolt completely. You just lift it and put it back down, like if you need to test something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, they use a trigger hanger, it makes it easier to get the trigger on and off. Um, and they're also cut for AICS and AW mags as well. 
whereas a lot of them are only cut for AICS mags, so it gives you more mag choices. Wow. Yeah. Sounds to me like they really jam packed a ton of features in that. Action. They really, they really did. They um, yeah. now they have, they have a lightweight offering now too versus their standard. So it you know it doesn't have the full length rail. It's got the front and rear section. Yeah. Like a lot of the lightweight ones do, but I mean they're, you know, are there smoother actions out there? Yeah, for fourteen hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars. But yeah, but then I mean, you don't get a lot of those. Like just say here's you know this one here. Um. See if you can see, like that doesn't hang up or, or catch no. or anything. No, not at all. It's very smooth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that they added the rail on top. Yeah, and I mean it, integral recoil lug is nice too. Yep. Um so that's what you'd use. I, and I think that's fair. I mean, you gave a lot yeah, of really I mean, good. I mean, right now, yeah, I've got a pretty good uh got a pretty good stock of them so yep. i mean i just uh and i don't know i mean i just got into the bolt game probably uh last winter i guess i was kind of i was kind of leery of it and uh me and scott over at uh speed or specialized dynamics or whatever we i don't know we were probably on the phone for four hours going over the ins and outs of everything that you know i need to do and test and check because i don't want to do anything without you know knowing what i need to do right and I mean, everybody's loved them. I mean, the first one I built was a 300 wind mag. I mean, so that was oh, uh, shit. yeah, yeah. I had a, a 24 inch carbon 300 wind mag. So I was like, you know, if I'm gonna build one. I'm gonna build a good go one. Go bigger, go home, baby. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna build myself a 338 at some point. I just yeah, that's I nice. just need to get the parts. I've got the suppressor for it. So I just I'll uh, tell you what, man. I I recently I went I went away from AR for for coyotes. Um, biggest reason, uh, I just. There's something about the accuracy. I think I think you can probably achieve a little bit better accuracy and repeatability out of out of them. Um, you probably disagree because you're building super high end precision ARs, but I I hadn't I hadn't to that point shot a, a really high end what I would consider precision AR. Um, Scott's build was probably the closest thing I had to that, um, you know. And then so I went to a Sig Cross in 6.5 Creedmoor and yeah. it. I'm just running the factory 18 inch barrel and I'm, I'm using that new Hornady V match 100 grain um, ELD VT that they just came out with. It's a factory load. I hand load and I'll tell you right now, I couldn't hand load a, a, ba a better round than that factory ammo is, so is the, the VT or the V match, the VT. It's, so the it's VT. So what they did. So what they did is they, they released the projectile as the, the VT they're calling it the ELD VT. Right, right, right. That's the name of the actual projectile. And then the rounds, the, if you want to buy factory load, so it's it's complete load with that projectile in it, it's called V-Match. Right. And uh, and it's specifically made for varmint hunting, really. I mean, that's what they're that's what they're uh, kind of marketing it for. There's fur on the box. Like the Hold on a there. second. I, uh, I've got to plug my computer in here. And this, I, might have oh, to change yeah, it I really wanted a custom bolt gun build. Uh, right. But when I started looking at prices, I was like, Jesus, man, I, I'm going to spend almost four grand, 3,500 bucks on what I really would want. And I can go get this SIG cross for 1600 bucks. I was yeah, like, it's, it's, it's hard to match that. The, um, you know, mine run between 28 and 32. And then if you really want like a, I mean, a high end chassis, you know, you may looking at like 35, like, so that's. Yep. That's kind of the range. It's really kind of hard to get a bolt gun under twenty eight hundred dollars, really. Like unless you find a used or some kind of factory cheap. But I mean, it, yeah. you know, even with the arrow, I mean, it's nine hundred dollars. Like if you using right. a big horn, it's going to be a thousand, or you know, Kel Blaze is going to be twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Like it's just you yeah. know hard. Now, I mean, you know, can certainly bring it down if you know use a, a steel barrel. I mean, I've got a bunch of manufacturers that uh, that I carry too. That you know, I don't just carry the the proof or the spade barrels or the BSF, the carbons. I've got a lot of stainless barrels in stock too. So, um, so yeah, that definitely saves like four or $500. And that's, I use one of the Lilja barrels, but they're, you know, that's a thousand dollar steel barrel. They are, oh. they're top notch. Yeah. Wow. They're, yeah. That's, uh, they must be awesome. Yeah. I built a 204 Ruger AR 
fifteen for a guy, and uh, I mean he he stacks dimes at two hundred yards with it. Like he couldn't mm-hmm. he couldn't even he just he loves it. Yeah, and you were talking about the accuracy. The uh, probably one of my like favorite moments as far as like building a gun. I had a customer call me, and he's a he's a bolt gun builder, and he called and said that he heard that I was the guy to talk to about getting a gas gun built. And I was like, well, I don't know about all that, but I'll certainly build you one, you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, this is coming from a guy who builds precision bolt gun. So, you know, he's big on accuracy and he wanted a six millimeter Creed. And he said that a lot of people, you know, weren't having good luck with the six Creeds. And I'm like, well, I've never had an issue with, you know, a lot of people say they have feeding issues with the six Creed. I've never, okay experienced a single issue um so anyway i built him one full carbon one sent it out and uh you know he did the break-in procedure and he of course he does hand loads and stuff like that and he sent me back a uh, grouping it was his he was averaging between 0.38 and 0.42 wow and like he's you know so he's the guy like if anybody ever calls me with questions with a six creed i'm like hey you know talk to greg he uh he was my first six creed that i built and uh and, you know because everybody has questions i was like you know right. call him and you know he'll he'll tell you everything you need to know so and i've built you know a lot of them since but yeah well hey mark uh we're getting to the end of the episode and i right. wanted to ask you a question i didn't send you this question oh uh, you're tricking and, me uh, <laughs> this is something i'm gonna do at the end of any every podcast is ask uh ask a question that i didn't send to the guest and just for fun, nothing crazy. So you're going to go out west hunting predators and big game. So you're going to go hunt coyotes and maybe elk or something. You can only take one rifle. What's it going to be? Platform and caliber. Platform and cartridge. Oh, I'm taking my my rifle in t- the 24-inch 6.5 all day. I've got so much time behind that rifle. Like, I'm confident um, that that's it. Like, yep. I, hey, uh, that's a good answer. I mean, it is. That, it's that, just that, that that is a do all, really. It, it it really is. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to change to shoot something bigger with a heavier bullet, I mean, it would be, you know, I mean, of course, you know, with the mounts and stuff they have for the thermals now, you can remount your your thermal as long as you keep it on the same spot that's on the right. rail and the zero stays. And yep. then I can have one of my day optics I could mount and have it set up for a heavier bullet. That's you right. know, for some, I don't, I don't honestly do any other hunting besides predator hunting. I mean, I'm, I'm ate up with predator hunting. Me too. Man. Um, well, I don't, I, I don't have time to do, you know, it's nighttime. That's when I'm not doing anything and I'm a night owl anyway. I'll hunt all night and work all day. That's fine with me. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but that's the only hunting I do. Like I used to do a little bit of dove hunting because it's, you know, it's fun. They're flying every which way and all that. And, uh, you know, it's a challenge. Like I'm just. Deer hunting was never, I don't really eat deer, you know, I mean, it, uh, if I had to survive off of it, I would, but I'm not jumping over a steak, you know, to get to some deer meat. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not either, but I do eat deer meat. I, I you know, yeah. I, I mean, I can eat it. It's yeah. not, but it's, you know, I don't, so it'd yeah, be kind of a waste for me. You know, yeah. I don't want to just go, I mean, I realize I'm just go killing coyotes, but they have a purpose to not eating people, sheep and animals and all that right. stuff like yeah. that, but, you know? But, but yeah, I mean, that rifle, uh, I just, I'm kind of one with that rifle now. Like I've, I don't, I know that I've got 2,500 rounds through it at predators. So I, uh, I know the in and out of that rifle. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like it's got a special place in your heart for sure. I'm going to tell you my LaRue, I mean, that nothing will ever replace that. Like called her Lulu. And, uh, that was, uh. That's still probably one of, you know, I've still got a ways to go before it'll top that one just because that was just a, you know, I probably got 5,000 rounds through that. Wow. Um, but, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I do, I really enjoy it. I like, you know, I like having a 24 inch barrel to maximize the velocity out of it. Um, so, yeah. Well, cool, yeah. man. But I do want to throw one thing out. Um, you had a question you were talking about, you were going to ask me like, you know, what separates us from other companies? And, yes, sir. you know, when you call, you get me, when you email, you get me like, 
I'm going to talk to you through the process. It's a lot of money for a rifle or it could, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but generally for AR-10 is going to be a, a good amount of money. Um, you know, I've had so many customers call me and say that they get to run around or they get sent to a website like that. You want to talk to me, whether it's weekend, holiday, you know, if I'm available to answer, you text me, call me, whatever, you're going to get me. And that's, you know, you're always going to get service like that. It's just, uh, I don't like emailing or texting back and forth. Like if you want to have a conversation about everything that you want in your rifle, that's, that's what you get. So that's, that's what I take yeah, pride yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that type of stuff is going away these days and, and it truly does separate people. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to, to bring oh, no. that up. We got lost in conversation, but no, it, <laughs> that's important. Um, you know, it's when you talk about spending, you know, three, four thousand dollars on a on a high end real high end build. Um, you know, Absolutely. you're you're, uh, you're gonna want that service and you're gonna want to be able to pick up that phone and, and talk to somebody. Yeah, um, and you get it for life. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I know you're getting late, but this is this is a story that people will laugh at. I got married in May and I was getting dressed and I just sent a rifle to a customer that week. And he was texting me, asking me how to get the gas adjusted because he hadn't got his suppressor yet. And then he finally got it. So he wanted to get his gas adjusted. So I was going through the steps and he was like, well, what about this, 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 and this? I'm like, look, I said, here you go. I said, here's the full steps this is what you got to do, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he was asking questions. I said, look, I said, I'm going to have to talk to you tomorrow, bud. I said, I'm getting ready to walk down the aisle. I mean, he's like, he's like, good, man. He's like, man, go get married. He's like, wow, talk about service. But I was, I was getting dressed to go get married. And oh, shit. here I am helping the guy sit as a gas on his six creed board. <laughs> hey, man, you know, that hey. is service. But also what, what more than that, it's passion. You know, it's like you love what you oh, do. Yeah. And I, I don't, I, I want everything, you know, that I sell to, be enjoyed and and function the way it needs to and stuff like that like you know i would dread a call about you know and and at some point or another it's going to happen there's going to be an issue but it's you know i'll be there to to answer the call and to get it fixed i've made a lot of friends in this in this business with the right and stuff like that too and you know everybody's like you know you just just like talking to one of your friends like i had one dude like send me a a a raunchy joke and i didn't reply like right away and he's like man i'm sorry i was like no nah, that was funny as shit i just i didn't have the phone on me he's like oh good I, you can't ever joke with anybody anymore so you can joke with me like if i'm not uh, joking with you i don't like you so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're right though and but, we, we've gotten to that point nowadays where it's you don't know who you can talk to and but uh well cool mark man that's awesome um i, I could probably talk to you for hours about this stuff i, I really could hey man you got my number now anytime Yes, sir. We no will uh, we'll stuff, be so. in touch. And, and hopefully, like, if I do get down there, uh, I would love to, to meet you and pull the trigger on one of those things. Nah, but we get us all together because I can tell you that you get me, Blake, <laughs> and Guffy together. It's, it's going to be rough. Oh, yeah. I you think, know, I think you, I'm never seen point. anybody get smacked in the balls while they get ready to pull the trigger <laughs> on the coyote. Yeah, that's the type of stuff you get. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, I'm here for it. So, uh, anyway, Mark, thanks again, brother, and uh, be well. I appreciate cool. it. We'll be in touch, man. Thanks a lot. Sounds good, brother. Thanks for having me. Take care, Mark.